Hello guys and welcome back to the simply code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about nested for loops in Java. So we talked about the while loops, the do while loops, the classic for loop, also the enhanced for loop. So now we are going to look at a variation of the classic for loops in a in a condition where we have to use more than one loop in a nested fashion. And how do we do that? What are the use cases when we use that? So in front of you, you can see an example which I have prepared for nested for loops. And in this particular example, I have created a two dimensional array. As you can see on the line number six, I have created an integer array and I have put two square brackets here, which are basically symbolizing that this is a two dimensional array. So this two dimensional array is going to hold technically a 2D matrix. And we are going to use the concept of nested for loops to print this 2D array in a 2D matrix style where you will be able to see the rows and columns clearly. Let's first try to inter uh, interpret this particular uh, 2D array. So we have a curly braces outside and then we have these three inner elements which symbolizes three rows basically. So this is the first row. This is the second row and this is the third row. And then each of the rows have three elements each which symbolizes the column values or the item values. So it's basically a three into three 2D array which has three rows and three columns. So so we can say that this is basically a three into three array which has three dimensions on the row side and three dimensions on the column side or just a three by three matrix or three by three 2D array. So as we know that in case of arrays, everything starts from zero. So technically, if we talk about the indexes, it would be the index zero, index one and index two on the row side. And similarly, index zero, index one and index two on the column side. So that's that's something which you should remember because we are going to use this particular concept when we write the for loop. So let's try to write the for loop now. If you look at line number eight, we put this keyword called for and then we write the initialization. So we say int i equal to zero. Then we are writing the termination condition and we are saying run, run this particular loop, run this whole loop which ends at line 13 till i is less than three and keep incrementing i at every step. That's what I'm doing in the line number eight. Then inside the for loop, I'm writing another for loop which has another different variable called j. It can be anything you can name it anything you want and this also starts with zero and this also has a similar condition which is which says run this particular loop the line 10 basically or this loop which is signified by this curly braces run this particular loop till the time the value of j is less than three and keep incrementing j at every step and at line number 10 print the element of array which has the current value of i and the current value of j. These are basically the positions. These are not the elements. The element would be represented by this whole, but print the element which is at current i and j's position values. That's what this code means. So let's try to do a dry run on this particular code to understand how this is going to work. So at first we have i equal to zero. Zero is less than three and it goes inside. It initializes j as well with zero and j is zero is also less than three. So this condition went true. That's why we went to line number nine and line number nine condition also went to true. So we went to line number 10. Remember that in this particular case at line number 10, the values of i and j are zero and zero respectively. And we are saying print the array of zero and zero. So zeroth rows, zeroth column elements should be printed. So this is the zeroth row because this is the first uh, first sub block and this is the first element. So in this case in line number 10 two should get printed. Then it goes here and it increments the J to one. So zero plus one becomes one. It again checks the condition is one less than three. So yes one is less than three. It goes here. Remember it did not go up at line number eight. It just came back from line number nine. So when it comes here I is still zero but j has moved from zero to one. So now we are trying to access the element which is at zeroth row first column, which is going to be seven. So seven is going to get printed. 
Similarly, on the next iteration, j is going to get incremented from 1 to 2. And again, the condition will be evaluated. So 2 is less than 3. All good. It will again come back to line number 10. And now it will say print the value of 0 row third or the second column or the third element. So 0th row third element, which is the 9. So 9 will get printed. Then again, j will be incremented and j will become 3, 2 plus 1, 3. And now the condition will be evaluated. Is 3 less than 3? No, it is not less than 3. The condition becomes false. So it breaks out of the loop, goes to line number 12, prints an empty line because we are not writing anything here. So it will just print a blank line. And now it will go back to line number 8's condition and it will do an increment of i. And now i will move from 0 to 1. And now the evaluation will happen. Is 1 less than 3? Yes, 1 is less than 3. So it will again go to line number 9. Again, initialize j with a fresh 0. The previous j got destroyed the moment you came out of the loop. So this is a new j. So this j again gets initialized to 0. 0 is less than 3. It goes here. Remember, i was 1 in this time. So now it will print the value of this 2D array, which is sitting at 1, 0. Basically, second row, first element. So second row, first element, which is 3. Again, j is going, going to get incremented and it will become from 0 to 1. So 1 is less than 3. Yes, it will again come here and it will print the value of the array, which is sitting at array of 1, 1 for a row equal to 1 and column equal to 1, which will be 6. Similarly, j will get incremented again. Again, 2 is less than 3. Come back here, we'll print 1. Then again, we'll increment j. j will become 3. 3 is less than 3. No, it's false. The condition is false. So it jumps out of the loop, goes to line number 12, prints a blank line, again goes back to 8, line number 8, increments i, and i now becomes 2. 2 is less than 3. Yes, it will again go here, initialize j again with 0, and again does the same thing for the row 2 and column 0, 1, 2. And again, it will come out of the loop. This time, again, when it will go here, the value will become from 2 to 3 and 3 is not less than 3. So then it will break out of the outer loop. So the idea is execute the inner loop for every value of the outer loop. Remember this line because that is how you will be applying your knowledge of nested for loops to be used in certain condition. So whenever you have a scenario where you have to iterate over a collection based on a certain value of another collection, then you can use nested for loops. Or you have a scenario where you have to iterate over 2D or 3D arrays. For example, if we were dealing with 3D arrays, then you would have seen three nested for loops here. And where it will apply the same logic that iterate over all the collections, all the values of the inner loop on a particular value of the outer loop. Then increment the value of the outer loop and do the same thing again. Iterate over all the values of the inner loop based on a fixed value of the outer loop. So let's run this program and let's see what kind of output do we get. So like I said, our, our motive, our target was to print this in a, in a matrix style. And you can see that it is printing in a, it in a sort of a matrix representation. So the first row gets printed here. Then the second row gets printed here. And then the third row gets printed here. If you try to decipher it, it will work exactly the same way as I explained. So i equal to 0, 0 less than 3, condition becomes true, comes here j equal to 0, j less than 3, condition becomes true, comes here, prints the array of 0, 0, which is 2, then prints the uh, array of 0, 1, which is 7, 0, 2, which is 9, then j becomes 3, it breaks out of the loop, goes up here, i becomes from 0 to 1, 1 is less than 3, yes, again comes here, reinitializes a fresh for loop with a new j setting to 0, and it will, it will print the array of 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, then similarly array of 2 0 2 1 2 2 so that's basically what we are doing we are iterating we are taking the first row and iterating all elements of it taking the second row iterating all all elements over it and so on and so forth you can do this for any n dimensional kind of array or a collection so this is all i wanted to cover in today's session where we discussed about the nested for loops concept and how and where we will use it and in the next session we will be discussing about the Java collections framework. If you like this video, 
a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please do not forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session